right, good morning everyone. How are you doing? And welcome to the show. What we got behind us is a Porsche. Nice snazzy convertible. And it's my favorite color too. I love silver. I know, right? My car's silver. His is white. Mm. What do we got going on here today? We're putting a full stereo in this guy. We're pulling out all the factory stuff, putting in all new stuff. What are we putting in, Fernando? We're gonna put the full count performance. Also known as Flax. Yes, three-way set. That's right, so the plan is to put the little mid-range and tweeter up in this factory pod. Then put the six inch mid base down in the lower part of the door where the other mid base is at. We're also gonna do a Kenwood 9904. He's got the Euro Motor Speeds dash kit that we use. We're gonna go with this amplifier here. Now this is a little older amplifier. This is kind of a cool amp. This is an X454. And the reason why we picked this amplifier over all the others is because it's 60 watts by two and 100 watts by two. It's split and that the rear is gonna get less power than the front because we got this big three-way set we need to power up here. So this will allow us to put a lot more power to those than to the rears. Because for the rear, all we're doing is a little set of fours. Fours. So this guy there. Yeah. That's the plan anyways. I'm not 100% sure on that. I mean, I'm gonna try to get them to fit. If not, we'll come up with plan B right now. That's plan A. The amplifier, it's a little bit longer. Backup camera. Oh, we're also doing a backup camera. Sorry about that. We're doing, uh, if you guys saw the last Porsche where we put the backup camera in, yep. apparently that's gonna be a new trend. They work really nice on this car. It's this one. Right here, the PCAM 150. The amplifier is a little big. It's not gonna go where the factory amp is, but let me show you where we're gonna put it. The plan right now is to mount it here onto this this area. This one is, this one's cool. It's been a while since I've worked on one that actually has the spare tire in it. Most of them don't. They have the run flat tires on them and they don't give you the spare. That's the factory amp right there. And it's our amp is too big to replace that. We're thinking right here will be a good spot. So that's the rundown on what we're planning on doing. Now what we're gonna do is Fernando's gonna start on the camera because that thing takes a while to do. And then I'm gonna start pulling all the panels and stuff like that, get factory speakers out, get the radio out, just basically disassemble everything inside the car that we need to get apart so we can start putting the new stuff. Sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan. All right. And I love it when a plan comes together. Go A team. <laughs> All the stuff we needed to get out is out. So the car's apart, we're coming up with our game plan as far as what we're gonna have to fabricate, where things are gonna go. Let me get you up to speed on what our thought process is here. Up underneath the hood, we went ahead and removed everything. The amplifier plugs, this guy right here. I know they make an adapter for that, we just don't have it. Now, my thought is, I really don't wanna cut this off. That, yeah, I mean, we, we have a big enough hole here. There's a giant hole, it's, it's like that big around right there. So my, my plan is to run the tweeter, the mid, the rear, and then just have to tap into that for the door speakers. So we won't have to actually cut it, we can just solder into it. We're gonna mount it here, where we talked about. So we'll mount the amp, and then we'll mount the two crossovers here. So there's plenty of space to do that. We'll make a board that everything mounts to and tucks and runs away. We got the dash apart. So we went ahead and took the whole this whole area out here. The air conditioner was up here. It's gonna move down into this area here. So we just went ahead and removed it. Make it a little bit easier to run the cables down. We also have to 
on this piece here, these black tabs, this one right here, we have to remove both of those so that we can, can fit the double din in. We also have all of the components out. So two of these are for front, two of them are for rear. We'll be able to make some housings to fit the smaller drivers. We still have to figure out what we're gonna do for the four inch in the rear. That's one thing we're still working on. The second thing we're working on is this guy right here. This is the lower portion of the door and that houses this little guy right here. It's actually a small little five inch and it sounds good. And the reason why it sounds good is because this huge thing here is its enclosure. This guy here is what is in the door. It snakes up behind the windows and everything. We have to fit this speaker here. So that's gonna be difficult. This piece here comes off because this allows the foam gasket to marriage up with the door. The plan is we're going to take this router out a flat piece with the speaker hole in it. We're going to remove the whole top of this here so that it's flat with the rest of this. And then we'll be able to take this piece with our new speaker hole and attach it on like that. That's the plan right now anyways. We'll see how that goes. Once we get into it, start cutting and molding and figuring out. Eh. But I, I'm fairly confident that's gonna be how it'll work. I mean, I want to reuse as much as this enclosure as I can because it really did help the base. And then once we're done, we're also gonna road kill it and make it a nice door baked potato. It's supposed to be ported. Well, they covered the port. So we've gone ahead and gotten this top layer off. For template purposes, we've just gone ahead and attached this onto here. You can kind of get an idea of what I'm thinking here is that we're gonna router this out. This will go into here like this. Factory speaker lines up where my new speaker is gonna go. We may also have to remove some of this back here and make a new back piece. We'll see what we come up with with this once we start making them and seeing how high we can get it. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna router this piece out of a piece of half inch. So we have our basic shape as far as what we're looking for. Now we can start building off of this and making more. So there's a little bit of room between this and the window. I might actually just heat this up and push the speaker in. So what that involves is a heat gun and we're just gonna sit here and get this super hot and then we're gonna push the speaker's magnet into play. Now if you could see it, see how it's sunken in there? How you know when it's getting hot enough is when gravity is doing its thing. Just keep going until, yep, all right. That should be enough. Go ahead and put our guy back in here. Drop our speaker into place. Go ahead and tap it on the bottom.
What I'm doing is I'm forming it to the magnet on the back of the speaker. I put the spacer so I could set and push this in. I'm planning on still putting an eighth of an inch, another gasket on it to lift it up off of the back. This has a hole in the back of it, or it's a vented pole piece, so I don't want it to be totally tight against the back of this. We know where the pole piece is, because there's the piece of tape from the pole piece. I actually formed it in. So now we have room for the magnet. Let's just go see if this actually fits back into the door without hitting the window. Ooh, look at that, plenty of room. All right, so we got plenty of room between the bar here and the back of this. So now we just need to make a eighth inch piece for the top of this and a second one for the other side. And then of course we'll go ahead and road kill the heck out of this thing. We'll have to clean it off first because it does have some dirt on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go ahead and router out two of these out of eighth inch and go ahead and make two more of these so I'll actually have this in case I need another one. Back here, Fernando is finishing up. As you've seen the tail lights back in. This is, you know, we, we've showed it before where we had take this out, we tap the reverse light there. We're running the wire now. Camera is up in place. It tucks up underneath there. Really nice. So we went ahead and got all our pieces made up. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to glue the rings that we made onto our panel. A lot of you guys ask about bonding issues. So like this is the Sentra blown PVC and this is ABS. Do these things have any issues sticking together? We've never ran into any. I mean, we've stuck a lot of this stuff together. Never had any issues. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put foam on the backside, foam around here. We're also gonna pre-drill our holes and then we're gonna add a connection point out the front here so that this can all be attached and just screw right in, no problem. This is the factory wire that we pulled out. We're just gonna go ahead and mount it right here. The last step I wanna do is, before we finish this up and get it all ready to go, is I actually fit it in the car, put the door panel back on, and make sure that it fits with the door panel. Three seconds ago in this video, I was getting ready to come over here and test fit the speaker pod into the door, this, this hole right here. And then I was going to put the door panel back on, this guy right here, to make sure that everything fit. Then I looked at my watch, and I was like, oh my God, we gotta go, because it's 6.30, we leave. We're back at it this morning. First thing on the agenda is I'm passing it off to Fernando because he was working on the backup camera what seems like minutes ago and he's done with that so now he's going to go ahead and take over the door panels make sure everything fits if it fits we're awesome we'll proceed to the other door let's just get rolling so there's you're here here to there It fits. It fits perfectly. It's right there.
underneath the hood by the spare tire is the factory amplifier and it has this cool mount right here. This sits like this in the car. The thought is because we have these two big passive crossovers we have to put somewhere is to make a mount and then attach these right here so that these are tucked in out of the way. So what I'll do now is go ahead and make a piece of eighth inch ABS that is the shape of this so that we can screw it into here. We'll start running some of the wires that we need to go up to the amplifier and into the car. All right, so there we go. It's all set, it's mounted. Let's go ahead and start getting some wire figured out for what we're gonna do in the car. We're gonna run two new wires up there, two wires for the rear, and then for the doors, we're just gonna go ahead and actually solder into the harness itself. What we wanna do is just kinda get an idea of how much wire we're gonna need and start getting that on here. So we have the crossovers all set and ready to go. We ran 16 gauge out is going to go to all the speakers and then we have two 12 gauge inputs that are gonna come from the amplifier and feed this monster. We're going ahead and Tessa taped it all up so it looks as factory as possible. So we've gone ahead and covered it all up. Let's go ahead and take it over to the car and kind of get an idea of where this is gonna sit. Normally we don't do this, where we have the wires ran first. Normally, as you guys know, we screw the amp in, the wires all just run from there. This one we're doing a little bit different. It'll be easier this way. We're gonna go ahead and get these wires up in here, and then we'll mount the amp in and connect it old school style. So the plan now is to drill a hole here so that we can run these wires in through the factory grommet there. All right, so now we've gone ahead and insulated this so that we can run our wires through it. Now we're gonna go ahead and take this battery out so we can make it easier to get through the firewall over here with the factory.
So we have four of these in the car. This is going to be two in the front, two in the back. What it has is a tweeter and sort of a four inch. The plan, like I said, is to put the tweeter and the mid-range in two of them and then a set of four inch coaxials in the ones that go on the rear. This is the rear. We want to go ahead and get it apart and see what it's going to take in order to make that happen. These are the PC100 Focals Performance Series. So now we have a trim bezel that is the exact size that we need. So just like that. All right. So now what we need to do is attach this speaker to this sort of piece of plastic. Now what we've done is we've taken the ring that we've made and we've attached it to the screw. So now we have a mount for the speaker and it just will snap into here like this. So as you can see, now what we need to do is we're going to copy the factory attachments, which were here and here, and then we'll attach this to it. The tweeter will go ahead and mount into the factory location where the tweeter is and solder the connection all back together. So let's keep going. What do you have to mount? This? No, I had to make this grind off these, drill holes through the basket, make this so that this will sit like that. And then of course we remove the tweeter because the tweeter sticks out too far. So how is it gonna hold this speaker? See it has these two tabs right here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make this bracket, it's gonna go here. I'm gonna sand these down so that this, and I'll drill the two holes that these had, and then this will hold this, and then all I need to do is do the same over here, and then I'll be done.
right, so that's the mock-up for right now. And I don't wanna, I'm gonna glue these brackets on here. I don't wanna do that yet because I still have a second one of these to build. Now what I wanna do is go ahead and make sure this fits in. All right, so, so far so good. I just set it in place, you know, made sure it slid in, it slid in. Now let's take a look at this tweeter and figure out how we're gonna get this thing mounted into the factory location. So now what we've done is we've successfully taken a coaxial and broke it down into its components and made a separate that's gonna fit in this thing and sound awesome. So we've made quite a mess. The plan is to, now that we've had this all set, we've got one of them done, we still have the second one to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean all this up. We're gonna take this guy apart here. We're gonna route route us another one of these guys here and then we'll have, we can reassemble it as two. are done. We have both of them all set and ready to go. So we went ahead and added some hot glue in here to hold the capacitor in place. We have both speakers all set. We have our gray, we have our white. So they're actually gonna go pat driver's passenger and they're marked like we marked them earlier. We put a three here and a four here so we knew which one was which. Now all we need to do is go ahead and get them into the car. Fernando's already got the wire ran to this one, which is the driver. So let's go ahead and get this one in. All we got to do is put some connectors on it. All right, we have one more speaker done. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, make. I was thinking over here. Just uh -huh. having it come like this. Did you already mark that? Mm -hmm. oh. I mean, I can take. Because this will come like this. If we come over here, then it's just gonna come right in. Okay. You know what I mean? Right or, or, because I was thinking a little higher. You know, because like that way it's a straight shot. Like this way it's gonna come down. If we come like and we lose this corner right here. Mm -hmm then it's just gonna come straight over. Like come up from this mark here, put a mark here and just kind of like. I'm saying if it's if it's right here, go ahead and put that back. So this is, this will sit just like this. Cause we don't want to cut these short. We mm -hmm. want these to be a little long. So if it's like this, we cut, Come and we cut right here. I think that'll get us what we need. That should work.
So next up on the list is the front speakers. And for the front speakers, we're doing the 80 millimeter mid-range as well as the tweeter that comes in the set. Let's go ahead and get these apart and make some brackets. So it looks like we're gonna do more or less the same thing we did on the rear. We're gonna make a spacer that's gonna take it from this size down to this size here. We'll use this to cut out the hole like we did on the last one. So let's get that same bezel we used for this. All right, so let's go ahead and cut some eighth inch and we'll go ahead and make one. So we have one of them mounted. What we wanna do is move on to the tweeter to get the tweeter figured out. More than likely, it's gonna be just like the last one. And then we'll make our brackets from here to here. there we go we have one of the dash speakers all built and ready to go back into the car I'm gonna go ahead and polarity test the mid-range just to make sure all right it's good as well lighten up green we can go ahead and get this into the car now So this one is in, the only thing I got left to do is put some screws in. Because we're doing a double din, the air conditioning controls that were up by the radio or below the radio or above the radio, either way, they were up at the radio. They need to get moved down here to this pocket here. The kit that he got from Euro Motor Speed comes with a trim bezel, and then he went ahead and also ordered the standard pocket that goes up here instead of the cool little CD tray thing that no one uses anymore. What we need to do is go ahead and get this guy out of here so that we can slide the AC in and also the other pocket. So these are the teeth here that you just need to push those down and then the pocket will come out. Now there is screw provisions here for the air conditioning controls. This will just slide back in its place. And there is a little bit of pushing you have to do. Let's go ahead and grab the pocket that you want. It snaps right in using the same style clips. We need to go grab two screws to go here. All right, so we'll go ahead and snap this on here just like that. So now there is two switches that go down here as well, but those will go in later. What we need to do now is join Fernando in the car. He's gonna go ahead and reroute the air conditioning control wires from up top where they were down to here. This is the cables we have to relocate in the bottom side. All right, a quick update. This has been a full day on the Porsche. We had part of the other day, then a full day today. So what have we gotten done? 
Well, I mean, you guys have seen it, but let's just go over it real quick. Underneath the hood, we went ahead and got the crossovers mounted. We have the speaker wires ready to connect to the amp. We have the RCAs ran, the remote turn on. We're getting ready to wire up the amplifier. We still have to make the mounts to get it to sit where we need to go. But we went ahead and ran all the wires, which brings us to inside the car in the dash. We already have the RCAs and the remote turn on, which is really all we need. We have the backup camera wires here as well. We've gone ahead and relocated the air conditioner down to here. Got the center console back in. So we went ahead also and got all the speakers in front rear dash doors we've gone ahead and got the side panels all put back together so that's the quick update on where we're at tomorrow we're going to come in in the morning we have to make the amp board we have to finish mocking up the radio and the dash getting that dash kit taken care of which is what i'm working on right now so tomorrow we're going to test fit the radio with the dash bezel then slide it into place make sure it all goes into place build the wiring heart well heck you know what You'll just have to wait and see. So, we're back at it. Fernando's already started underneath the hood. He's getting the power wires taken care of, trying to get those run so that we can, you know, get it mounted to here. I'm, like I said, getting ready to do a little bit of work on the radio, getting it test fitted into the dash, make sure that the trim bezel works the way it's supposed to. Let's just keep going. All right, so let's take a look at the dash bezel. This is the factory dash bezel. We're gonna go to a double din. So we need to remove this bar here. Let's take a look at the Euro Speed kit. First off, it comes with the really nice instructions. These are an upgrade from the last kit we saw, so they're definitely improving the way these things look. You have the trim bezel, harness, antenna adapter, the cage itself, and of course, they give you some screws, some crimp cap, and also a set of keys to remove the factory radio. We're gonna save all that for a little bit later once we get to the wiring harness. Right now we want to concentrate on getting this guy into the dash. To do that, there again, we'll also set this back in the box right now because we're not going to need that. There are four screws. Go ahead and remove them. We're just going to go ahead and put them back into the cage so we don't lose them. These are the pieces that are going to attach to the aftermarket radio. Like I said, this needs to go into here. So what I want to do is kind of get an idea of what I need to sand off. So it looks like I need to remove all these holes here. Pretty much bring everything to this level right here. Now anytime you're going to do any sanding or cutting or anything like that, always try to do it from the back side and not the front side. You don't want to like be sanding and it rolls across here and nicks this up or it goes across the cup holder. Another thing too, when you're cutting out a brace like that, start out farther than you need to. Just kind of bring the sander in and up at an angle. Okay, so there's a little nub right here in this area that sticks up higher than the rest of this. Make sure you sand it flat across the top as well as flat here. So that when you look at it from the side here, it's just one straight line going from this point to this point. All right, so once you get it sanded, go ahead and slide in your cage. All right, so now once you get the cage in, what you wanna do is bend these tabs. Unfortunately, there's plastic all the way around where those tabs need to bend. So what they recommend is you drill holes where the tabs are so you can push them through. We're gonna go ahead and use a roto zip to do the same thing. What you wanna do is make sure that all these metal tabs are sitting flush onto the plastic. All right, so once you get all the tabs uh, pushed in and it's nice and secure, all the silver pieces are touching the actual plastic, go ahead and take your trim bezel and we're gonna go ahead and test fit it in place. Start from the top and push. And of course your cup holder should still work because this should sit below a cup holder. All right, so we're test fitting good. Now we'll go ahead and put this back in the bag. We'll go ahead and get our radio slid into place. Do another test fitting, make sure that it opens and closes and all that.
Everything seems to be good with this mount. The only thing that I'm going to do is add a little bit of double-sided template tape to this, the, this stuff here, plastic-based. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of that to the top here and to the bottom here so that when we stick it in, it will actually stick to this. So just a little piece here, a little piece here. We went about halfway in so you won't see it from the front. We'll just set this aside for right now. So let's get to work on the harness. In the box, it gives you this harness here. Now in the box, like we said, it comes with the harness. It comes with the pigtail for the accessory to go over to the fuse box, which Fernando has already done. And also it gives you an illumination pigtail. Go on ahead and taped up all the wires we're not gonna use and cap them off on the Kenwood harness. Now what that leaves us with is the four wires that this needs, which are the constant 12 volts ground, amp turn on and amp turn on and power antenna turn on. Even though the amp isn't in the car anymore. I don't know if there's anything else on that circuit, so we're just gonna go ahead and hook it up anyways. It's not gonna hurt anything if it isn't. We also need to add in a pigtail for our turn on. All right, so now what that leaves us with is these four wires here. A reverse trigger, the accessory trigger, the amplifier output to turn on our aftermarket amplifier, and then also an illumination if we can find one. We're gonna go ahead and do now, just put some connectors on these so that we can plug them into our wires in the car. The reverse lead coming from the light is going to have the power on it, not this. So we wanna make sure we put the male end here, which essentially is the non-insulated end. Our accessory coming from the car is also gonna be the same thing. It's gonna have power, not the radio. So we're gonna put a male end on this. The same is going to be true for an illumination. And then the remote turn on is actually being created from the radio, so that's an output. So we're gonna put a female end on that. Now we're not just gonna leave these hanging out if we can't find a connector, so we're gonna go ahead and plug on our other ends that we can A, either hook up to a wire in the car or leave as a shield on on the wire if need be. There we go. Now our harness is all set and ready. We're gonna just go ahead and add two little zip ties here just to hold this together so it doesn't get caught in the sleeve of the radio. Now this guy is all set. Now, I think we're done with everything on the bench. We can actually head into the car and start getting the radio and that part of the dash put back together. All right, so we wanted to see if we could find an illumination and the cigarette lighter here has a light on it. On the harness, there's a brown, there's a red, there's this blue white. And a lot of the times in the German cars, there is an illumination here that we can actually use. And in this case, it's not gonna disappoint. The blue white wire is illumination. So we're gonna go ahead and tap into that. Now we're not using the cigarette lighter anymore because we have the USB located there. So the plan for the amp mount is to take this piece of ABS here and we're gonna drill four holes in it and have nuts that stick out through it, which will allow us to then go behind the carpet and have the four nuts stick out of the carpet that we can then take the amplifier over and bolt into place. What we want to do right now is start drilling holes and get this into the carpet. Thank you. 
Now what we want to do is put some Velcro, the fuzzy part of the Velcro on the back of these because it's metal on there and I don't want these tapping against that. Now what we want to do is figure out where on here this is going to go. Now we're just going to take it all and make the holes bigger. Right here, here, and there's two more over here. Those are the mounts. So now we can just take our amplifier. And it's going to sit just like this. We'll just have to put some washers and nuts on here. But before we do that, what I'd like to do is do a pre-check on the amplifier. Make sure that everything is set the way it needs to be. So for this, we're gonna run the high pass off. We're gonna use the deck to cross over the front speakers. We're gonna have the high pass on for the rear, and we're gonna go ahead and set those. And we're just gonna start at 200 because they're four inch, they're small. We don't need a lot of performance out of them. We also don't want them to blow. We're not using the bass boost on this at all because it's not powering a subwoofer. We're gonna go ahead and leave the gains one and two all the way down to start out with. So now we can go ahead and get this attached and start wiring this thing into the car. So the only wires we didn't run were into the door. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna tap into the factory harness here to get those. We just need to figure out which wires they are. Gotta be that one. And that one. All right, that was easy enough. What we need to do is just polarity check them so that we can hook up our wires in the right direction. So we'll turn on our PT9 and we'll go test it at the door. For the driver's front door, it was a green, green, brown. Green brown was negative, and on the passenger front door, it's a purple, purple brown, and the brown is negative. Now we're trying to avoid cutting the harness here, so what we're doing is we're just stripping it back like we normally do, and soldering the wires into the harness. Now is the most critical time. We're gonna do a polarity test to make sure everything's the way it's supposed to be. And then we're just gonna sit back and listen to it. Play with the EQ and the crossover a little bit. Get this thing sounding good. Been working on this car for three days. And this is the day they decide to freaking cut the grass. I just wanna hear this car. So right now the only speaker that isn't crossed over is the front doors. We're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of crossover to them. I'm just gonna actively put them right now at 50 hertz just to kind of hear where we're at. I'm gonna go ahead and put it at 18 dB so it's kind of steep. I'm gonna go back in here to balance. We'll fade us all the way to the front. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna play a little bit of pink noise just to get a idea of what this looks like. I have a basic idea of what the signal looks like. Let's go ahead and play some music. USB DM, uh, DMA1. This USB is bad. So we gotta pull this out, put a new one in. Kitty!
This is the iTest mic from Audio Control, model number SA4100i. If you got an iPad, an iPhone, an iDevice of any kind, it's a great little RTA to have for setting up and getting a good idea of, of what you're doing as far as tuning it. Once you get into the ballpark, then you can go in and start tweaking. Now the nice thing about these units, like this Kenwood, this has four EQ settings as far as what we can set up. We set what we, you know, EQ1 was what we kind of thought it would should be. EQ2 was more flattening out the sound. And then once we listened to those two, we tweaked them and made that EQ3. And then we made an EQ4. And then we went back to EQ1 and decided that one was terrible. So what we ended up with, we have different EQ settings that are set up so that we could AB between the two as we made little tweaks here and there, go back and play the song, play another song. For the crossover, for the doors, we ended up at 50 hertz, 12 dB. Underneath the hood, Fernando went ahead and mounted the fuse holder over here. We did a cool L where we attached it into one of these factory bolts here, so nice and secure. He's gonna go ahead and get this last panel in place because this is finally done. We have our RCA coming out over here and then all of the power speaker and everything are coming out of this area here so what we did is we ended up cutting a notch here into the panel that covers the brake assembly we didn't want to make it impossible for anything to be serviced because we realized this is a Porsche things are gonna break things are needed to be serviced so we actually have a, like a u-bend behind this so that this wiring harness can move up out of the way so they can get to work on this everything is real service orientated and easy to move if this needs to come out for whatever reason there's enough wire there for it to do that the crossovers are are up underneath here they're actually hidden mounted to the factory amplifier mount so everything under the hood is all set got all the panels back in the amplifier is looking sharp we have our carplay radio on the dash the 9904 usb airs moved down pocket replaced as you know all the speakers are in and this guy is Done. This was a long haul. Every speaker mount had to be made from scratch to fit into the factory grills. The dash kit had, every little thing in this was just like lots of fun. Of course, we almost forgot, we need a backup camera on here. You having fun over there? Yes. Cool. So much fun. All right guys, this one is over as we said. Thank goodness, it's been a fun couple days. You guys like to know how long you six. This would have taken two full days, two full days, because I mean, basically we had two half days. So it would have been a, it would have been a two full days if we would have had it, but they're on their way to pick it up. I'm gonna end it right here, guys, as usual. It's been fun, it's been exciting. You guys have a great night as always. We'll see you later next time, bye. On to the next one. And it is the middle of the day, so there is gonna be another one. We're not gonna film it. I'm tired. <laughs> See ya.